Imagine a cruise ship where there was 66% fewer people in the same amount of space, where there were no supplements for any of the restaurants, where the drinks were included and the tips not expected. Imagine a ship where every cabin is a suite, with a walk-in wardrobe, a decent sized balcony, personalised stationery and a free minibar stock to your preference. Well guess what? This ship already exists and it's called the Seabourn Encore. So hello and welcome to episode 55 of Planet Cruise Weekly with myself Keith and this is the first of our guest hosted episodes. I hear a, a slight woo from you. Yes, because we have actually invited a member, um, an influential member even of the cruise industry to join us here in the studio. And you can see it's certainly a step up from Glenn's Ugly Mug, because my co-host today is the business development manager for the ultra luxury small cruise ship line known as Seabourn. And her name, Danny Scanella. I love that name, Danny. Thank you. Now you've been representing Seabourn for the last five years, I believe. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. What's been the most exciting thing that's happened during that time? Well, I think it's the whole learning about the ultra luxury sector, which I think is within the cruise industry is absolutely fantastic. Um, but also the lead up to a brand new ship and launching a brand new ship um, has been phenomenal. Which of course is what we're talking about today on episode 55. It's all about the Seabourn Encore, that brand new ship. But before we go into that, for those of you that may not be familiar with Seabourn, um, who are they? Well, for a start, they were created back in 1988, I believe. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and really with a view to create this relaxed elegance that previously was only available on private yachts. You never talk about passengers, do you? You talk about guests, you talk about this idea. They're always guests, yes. Always guests. And the idea of, of being almost part of this, a member of this kind of exclusive ocean-going club. We have small ships in the fleet. We have three um, sister ships that carry just 458 guests. Um, but they really are for the discerning traveller. You know, we consider ourselves a luxury lifestyle brand. And one of the things I love about luxury cruising in particular is the fact that so much extra is included, Danny. And this is, I think, particularly true of Seabourn. Could you give us a, a few examples? Yes, it's, um, it really is a, an ultra luxury, um, all inclusive brand where all dining venues are included, so even with the speciality restaurants that we have on board, there aren't any cover charges. Drinks, there isn't that awkwardness, you know, with meeting friends in bars, or who's going to sign for the next round, because that just doesn't exist on board Seabourn. Everything is truly included. The in-suite bars, we don't call it a mini bar, because there's nothing miniature about the, uh, the bar that's in the suites in Seabourn. Um, we are very much about personalisation, so in their bar, if they only want Diet Coke and they can't stand, you know, Diet Pepsi, they'll only find Diet Coke in their bar, or whether it's a, you know, a certain white wine, red wine, champagne, you know, that's what we will put in their suites for them. Now, Seabourn have introduced some amazing innovations to the industry, such as the now legendary Caviar in the Surf Beach Party. And yes, you did hear me correctly there. I said Caviar in the Surf, beach party. Danny, this, this sounds amazing. I've not yet experienced it myself, so tell no, us No, it is it. absolutely amazing. It's one of those um, experiences that we offer to our guests. Again, complimentary. Um, it's done obviously in warmer climates um, because guests literally have to wade through the surf for their champagne and caviar. But it's a, a day where we drop anchor, we find a private island, our staff are off the ship at the crack of dawn while the guests are still sleeping, and they're literally setting up a barbecue on the beach. Um, they bring all, the, all of our sea toys off the ship, so all the kayaks, the sailing boats, the speed boats, um, they're all there for the guests to, to enjoy for the whole day. Around about midday, a zodiac comes through the, through the surf Offices in white, obviously, as you would expect, and they're literally offering out the caviar and champagne to our guests, and they're loving it, having a whale of a time. And yet, that's not the only thing because um, Seabourn are also one of the few companies who offer included bespoke excursions. Now, that's my, right. My particular yeah. favourite one here is the uh, the shopping with a chef in, yes. in a local market. Yes. Yeah. Um, kind of expand on this for yes, us. Yes, that's um, that's done in areas um, in Asia, in the Mediterranean, where you know obviously they have great cuisine, um, and our executive chef will take a small group out. Um, 
to a local market, so whether it be a fruit and vegetable market, fish market, meat market, make purchases through the day. Literally, they do a lot of tasting. If we're in uh, Livorno, we'll take a trip into one of the vineyards there. We'll do a cheese and wine tasting event. Um, but it's all about learning about different cultures and cuisines and tastes around the world. Another unique aspect to the Seaborne fleet is the way that the ships are designed to incorporate a private marina that literally opens out from the back of the ship. It kind of almost flips out, doesn't it? That's right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, on some of the itineraries, we offer this water sports day to our guests um, and they have the opportunities just to go kayaking, sailing boats, donuts. Jet skis? Jet skis, That's yes. And this is all included? All included. We have what we call our Officers on Deck event. Um, this happens usually the second night of, of a sailing where guests are invited up onto the pool deck um, and they're actually served by the officers. So they are served their appetizers before, their, before dinner uh, by the officers. They will be served their dessert up there as well. For the main part of their meal, they will go down to their chosen restaurant but it kind of creates that intimate connection between guests and officers. And then it ends up in the evenings with the musicians coming up on deck. A little bird told me, Danny, that recently you have introduced an amazing new program which really helps guests to immerse themselves and explore the destinations they travel to we in have. even greater detail. Yeah. Yes, we have. The program's called Ventures by Seaborn. It was put together by our expedition leader um, Robin West. Um, we launched it first of all in Antarctica, so in an amazing destination to, to, to be able to do this. And it's a program where guests will have the opportunity to disembark the ship directly into a kayak or into a zodiac. Um, and can you imagine kayaking in the Antarctic Sea with humpback whales and wow. you know yeah. eagles flying above you? An absolutely spectacular uh, experience. So the second destination where we feature Ventures by Seaborn is in Norway. Um, so guests have the opportunity of disembarking the, the ship um, in a fjord into a double kayak and literally sailing their own way up the fjord with these massive uh, mountains either side. Okay, now that gives us I think more of an idea about who Seaborn are and what they offer that's so different to everyone else in the industry. But let's now quickly look at the fleet. Now currently, Seaborn offer a, offer a fleet of four all-suite, all-inclusive small ships, pretty much on worldwide cruises. And each of these ships carries between 458 to 600 guests with a very high crew to guest ratio. It's one to one. Really? Yes. That's incredible. So you that just in itself tells you what service means to us. Now out of those four current ships in the fleet, three of them are part of what I believe are called the Odyssey class. Yes, Is that that's right. right. Yes. yes, that's right. We have the Odyssey, Sojourn and Quest that are identical. So when a guest sails on board the Odyssey and goes to the Seaborne Square, they will easily find the Seaborne Square on the other two ships as well because they are literally exactly the same. That's great. All suites, 90% feature verandas, so we have a small percentage which are just ocean view, uh, but the internal part of the suite is the same as the veranda, it's just that outside space that is the difference. By my calculations, you've got the newest luxury fleet out there because you... Now with the Seaborn Encore, yes. Yeah, because 2010, 2011 and 2012, is it for those three? 9, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11 for those three, and that's your oldest tonnage, shall yes. we say. Yep. And then you go to the most recent ship which was launched in 2016, which is the Encore. Yes, in December. In December, which we're going to talk about in more detail in a few minutes time. But you've also got another one coming out. The Seaborn Ovation. Okay. Yes, she joins the fleet in May 2018 um, and she will be the sister of the Seaborn Encore. But we are of course featuring today on that latest ship in the fleet, no as the uh, Seaborn Encore. She was launched in December 2016 and since it floated out, but then officially wasn't named and had the big ceremony and all the razzmatazz that comes with that. That was in January 2017. Sarah Brightman is the godmother and was the lady that was there leading that event. And that was in Singapore. And although this is a, a slightly larger ship with a, a few, you know, basically a 
roughly 150 more passengers, up to 600, it's still got that unique yacht class feel whilst introducing some unique innovations, including the fact that now all the accommodation is verandas. The, the suite in themselves are very spacious. They start off at 320 square feet, so that's a really sizable um, suite to have on board the ship. Mm. Um, but anything else up to 917, which is the Winter Garden Suite. Um, what's great about the Seaborn Encore is they're all marble bathrooms. Separate shower cubicles. Um, within the suite uh, bathrooms, we, the amenities is molten brown. But it's not just Martin Brown that we offer to our guests. When the guests actually arrive into the suites, um, they are welcomed in with their suite stewardesses, um, with a glass of champagne, tray of canapes, but also a tray of soaps, um, but designer soaps. So you'll have the L'Occitane, the Boldery, the Hermes. Wow. They find a particular one they like, then we'll replenish and make sure they've, their bathrooms are, are kitted out with that particular soap. We also have the fully stocked um, bars that we have for our guests with their preference of um, non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks. Now perhaps the most exciting thing is that Encore is the first ever cruise ship to have the interiors completely designed by a hotel and hospitality icon, Adam D. Tahani. This is a gentleman who's known as the mastermind behind many different luxury hotel projects such as South Africa's one and only Cape Town Resort, uh, the Cipriani in Venice, and uh, also other hotels around Vegas. So with um, Adam Tahani being um, a legend when it comes to ultra luxury design, um, it kind of became a project that seemed fitting for his passion for ultra luxury feels um, worked well. A good partnership. And funnily enough, partnership is something that's really, really close to the hearts of Seaborn because they're currently half their way through a six year partnership with UNESCO. Uh, which gives their guests, and I love this, unrivaled opportunities to explore some of the world's greatest wonders in bespoke behind the scenes tours. These are tours that no one else gets to do, but you do if you're with Seaborn because of that partnership. Now, buoyed up by the success of these partnerships, they've now also embarked on some new ones that um, are pretty much bespoke to the Encore, and then I guess will be rolled out along, to the, along with the sister ship as well. Um, tell us about Thomas Keller. And oh, Thomas Brian. Keller. Yes, Thomas Keller is an American um, chef and restaurateur. Um, he has a trio of Michelin star restaurants in the US, so French Laundry, Per Se, Bouchon. Um, on the Seaborn Encore, the restaurant has its own venue, so it's called The Grill by Thomas Keller. Um, on the Odyssey style ships, we are launching the menus in the main restaurant and also putting them into different venues around the ship as well. Oh, can I pop up? pop-up Keller right. restaurants on board right. the Odyssey class yes. as well. Great to hear. And then you've got someone, I believe, here, a mixologist who's in charge of leading the front of cocktails. And I, yes. I, I love a good cocktail. <laughs> so tell us about Brian. So Brian Van Flanden, again, it's, a, it's an American guy that um, come on board just to create what we call the Seaborn Signature Cocktails. Um, and what's great is that our guests have the opportunity to join a masterclass in cocktail making. Now, another partnership that actually really caught my eye, Danny, is the fact that you joined up with Dr. Andrew Veal. Now, this is a man with a huge profile in, in North America because of his innovative, holistic approach to integrative medicine. Um, this is a gentleman who really does believe in, in helping the body to help itself. And how does this relate to Encore? Well, for the first time ever, Encore and Seaborn have introduced, as part of the Spa and Wellness, a new program which integrates physical, social, environmental and spiritual well-being. It's all about mindfulness. Uh, and again, this is, a, this is pretty much a first at sea and, yeah. and very, very much a buzzword and something I think that's going to be tremendously successful. And you've already talked about Thomas Keller and, and the grill. I believe it's a new sushi restaurant that's also being offered on Encore. Yes, that's right. But what else in, in terms of food? What, what, what does Seaborn do to, to provide for food across the fleet? Okay, so on the um, Odyssey style ships, as well as the Encore, um, we have our main dining room, which is called the restaurant. Um, offers a la carte menus throughout the day. Also on a sea day, we have what we call our market lunch experience. And this is when the guests can literally walk through our galley kitchens to go and get their lunches. They walk through the galley? Through, through the galley. So they are walking through the open kitchen, 
um, meeting and interacting with our chefs, sous chefs, etc. Um, but it's a fabulous experience. That is incredible. So they're seeing the galley in operation in yes. a sense. Um, as well as the main dining room, we have our Colonnade restaurant, which is more of a Mediterranean style restaurant. Um, again, it's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, buffet style for early part of the day and then full way to service with an a la carte menu um, for the evening. Something more casual, we have our patio grill, which is open for lunch and dinner. So it gives the guests an opportunity to eat under the stars at night time. Okay, so that's food. How about though, when it comes to entertainment? Uh, I mean, I've, I've read one of the things that, that, that I really like the sound of is the fact that the, the late night entertainment venue on board Encore, and I believe across the whole of the fleet, um, sits right at the aft of the ship, um, and that it's a, it's a venue that's part in, part out. Uh, it's got you know hot tubs and whirlpools there, and it's a real opportunity. Lit up at night. Lit yeah. up at night. Yeah, yeah. it sounds incredible. So we've got the club venue. Um, again, as you said, it is located at the back of the ship, um, and then on the encore, the terrace. We're calling it the club terrace. Um, but guests, this is where we have our six-piece music band that will come in after the show um, about 11 o'clock at night and play until the last person goes to bed. Um, so that's literally six-piece band with singers, there's a dance floor. It's quite a great venue. Uh, sounds being amazing, at sounds yeah. amazing. Yeah, to have live, live music that late is, is quite unique as well. Yes. Um, okay, what else on board in terms of entertainment on board on call? So entertainment-wise, we have the Grand Salon and this is where we will have our theatre style shows on an evening in the Mediterranean or in the uh, in Asia but somewhere where it's warm in the evenings we will then take the show from the Grand Salon and the performers will actually just perform up on deck. Uh, when this happens we actually call it uh, Rock the Boat um, and it's a great evening as well and this is where you'll find a lot of the staff um, officers come up as well for that evening entertainment. One of the enrichment programs that we offer to our guests is called our Seaborne Conversations. Um, this is a really popular um, event that happens on board um, where we've had people in the past like Richard Stone from the UK for instance he is the royal portrait painter he's painted many portraits of the Queen, uh, the royal family in general Margaret Thatcher, Desmond she's Tutu done as well, Desmond Tutu, yeah, yes right. that's right, and Nelson Mandela. Okay. So he has so many stories to tell about all of these different individuals that he's he's worked with in the past. I believe as well there's there's a new show courtesy courtesy of Tim Weiss or something to do with Tim Weiss that's come in. Yes, when we launched the Seaborn Encore, um, as with everything with the new ship, we wanted to introduce new elements mm. to the offering um, for our guests. And one is this partnership with Sir Tim Rice um, and the event is actually called An Evening with Tim Rice and it, it's basically a story about his life, um, so it's all musical theatre which is absolutely stunning. Yeah. Now another new addition to the Encore is The Retreat and this is situated up on deck 12, it's, it, it's a perfect sun trap. Uh, basically a high-end oasis that features private and intimate way to serve cabanas where you can sit Bollinger to your heart's content whilst indulging in bespoke treatments before maybe taking a relaxing dip in the Whirlpool Spa. It sounds absolutely divine. I'm sure it's where you find Danny uh, most days. But destination, very, very important of course because people are cruising, they're holidaying in order to maybe get somewhere as well as relax. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the destinations that Encore is going to and the wider fleet, where are we looking at here? So this summer the Encore will be um, doing a series of itineraries in the Mediterranean. So we're talking 2017? So we're talking 2017, 2017. Okay. yes. Um, and also incorporating some Norwegian fjords and Baltic sailings. Um, for the winter she'll be going back down to Australia. So Lovely. she'll be going through the Suez Canal up to Arabia down to uh, Singapore and then on to um, Australia doing some Australian New Zealand itineraries which is absolutely fantastic. And the rest of the fleet, the, the rest of the Odyssey So cars. the rest of the fleet, um, throughout the summer we have all four ships in Europe. So we have the Quest doing a series of Norwegian fjords and Baltic sailings as well as around Britain sailing. Um, we have the Odyssey and the Sojourn doing actually Alaska, back in Alaska after 15 years. 
um, and the Odyssey will be doing the Western Mediterranean. We launched Antarctic Programme 2012 um, and consistently is just becoming more and more of a bucket list destination that people are actually ticking off their list and taking the plunge and going down to Antarctica. We like to give our guests the opportunity to really explore the destinations because for them it is about seeing the places that they're going to. They're not just stopping for half a day and then moving on to the next. It is about learning about the different cultures and what there is to do in those destinations. So yes, in a lot of our um, ports we are leaving later, a lot later, um, but we have also a lot of um, overnights as well. For instance, in St. Petersburg, we'll have two overnights, which gives the guests three days to explore St. Petersburg. Well, hopefully that's given you a bit more of an idea about who Seabourn are, and in particular, the wonderful new ship, Seabourn Encore. And basically, we pretty much say that Seabourn is, is a company that is for the more discerning traveler. Any age, somebody who's looking to learn about incredible destinations in an authentic style, and at the same time enjoy the amenities and personalised service of an all-inclusive boutique hotel that just happens to be at sea. If you want more information, then click the link there and it will take you through to some of our experts who will be able to tell you more about where all the ships are and all the different cruises that are available for you to explore with Planet Cruise and of course Seaborn. Well, before we go, a big thank you to everyone that's been getting in touch over the past few weeks. Once again, we can't read out all the different comments, but I do want to say a particular thank you uh, to M.A. Welsh or Mar Welsh. We weren't quite sure, Mr. Welsh, which it was, uh, but he was uh, replying to our episode on the Baltics of Planet Cruise Weekly, which was a few weeks back. And he said, good info on St. Petersburg, uh, but is it the only port where a visa is an issue? Can you just do your own thing in the other ports? And the answer to that is yes, Mr. Welsh. Um, the only place in the Baltic where you need a visa is St. Petersburg currently, and we'll keep you informed if that changes. But the rest of them, you can just get off and do your own thing and not worry at all. And if you go with Seaborn to St. Petersburg, you get three days and two overnights to enjoy that. So plenty of time to go to the ballet. We'll see a little bit of that dancing or a bit of Rasputin, whatever you want to do. Now, if you want to get in contact, uh, really, really simple. Uh, you can email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk, comment on this video, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, or of course, find us also on Twitter at Planet Cruise. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you to my guests, the first of our true cruise experts, not the pretenders that normally sit here, such as myself. <laughs> so many thanks to Danny. Thank you very much, Keith. And uh, we'll see you next week.